Hey what's up everyone, this is Craig with Weeping Willow Guitar Lessons, and in this video we're going to take a look at how Jerry would approach soloing over A Simple Twist of Fate by looking at the first chorus of his first solo from 3-1-1980. I also did a lesson on Jerry's Catfish John solo from the same show. You can find a link both on the screen now and in the description below. Alright, before we get started on this one, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about transcription. This may get a little rambly, so if you want to skip ahead, go to the timestamp on the screen now. Alright, as a transcriber, your task is to interpret what you hear and choose the best way of representing it on paper. This sometimes becomes difficult because humans don't play metronomically. There is often some degree of imperfection, which is a good thing, and that's why if you program a song into a computer and listen back to it, it sounds stiff. It doesn't have that feel or the dynamics that a performer provides. I bring this up because with Jerry's playing, his phrases can be ahead or behind the beat, which add to the emotion of the solo. And on slower songs like Simple Twist of Fate, he'll sometimes just cram a bunch of notes into a beat. Um, in addition, this song has a swing feel to it, meaning that the eighth notes are played as shuffle eighths and not straight. But Jerry would sometimes switch between swinging the notes and playing them straight. These are all things that make a great performance, but make it difficult for the transcriber. That's why whenever I can, I give a source to go back to and check out. Whether what I'm teaching comes directly from or is based off a of performance, I always urge you to listen to the original. You can read what I've written out, you can hear my demo of me playing it, but I always recommend you go directly to the source. When the person we're transcribing lays back or rushes, were you rushing or were you dragging? We can quantize the rhythm, meaning we average or round off rhythm values to simplify the notation. In his book, Hearing and Writing Music, Ron Goro elegantly puts it, Transcribing recorded music requires editorial decisions as to the intention of the performer or composer. We quantize rhythm values for the sake of consistency and ease of reading, knowing that they will again become human and precise when our transcriptions are performed. You will notice the parts of my transcription are labeled lazy or straight or rushed, indicating that I've notated it to both capture the intent of the phrases and to make it easy to read. If I were to have made the exact transcription of what was played, it would have resulted in a very complex rhythmic figure. Instead, notating it in the simplified rhythm with laid back or rushed written above it, the phrase more accurately reflects the intent of what Jerry was playing and more accessible to the reader. Once you get this solo under your fingers, go back to the recording and listen to how Jerry performs it and see if you can come up with your own interpretation of the same solo. But most importantly, have fun. Alright, remember, just play, and if it feels right, it is right. D chord right under your fingers here with the D major scale. And then you can extend that up to here. So we're starting on the and of one. So instead of landing on a strong tone like the root, we're starting on the second, and then the second beat, we're landing on the third, the F sharp. All right, so this song has a swing feel. So when Jerry's playing his notes, he's not playing even eighth notes, but swung eighth notes. So we have this. Feel. So we're starting on the end of one. So we have one and two. All right, so we're starting on the 12th fret of the sixth string. Then we're playing nine, 10, 12 on the fifth, and sliding up to the 14th fret on the fifth string. Then 14th fret on the fifth string. go back and play 12th fret on the 5th, 14th fret on the 5th. So we're walking up the scale. Then on the 4th string we have 11, 12, 14, and then 11, 12, 11, 12. 
12 on the third string. Then 14th fret on the third, sliding up to 16. Then we go back to the 14th fret on the third string, and that's A. That's the um, minor third of our F sharp minor. And you can see that F minor right under your fingers. And we're playing the flat three right there. So then 14 on the third, 16 on the fourth, back to 14 on the third. Then 14 on the third again. Then we're going to play 16, pull off 15 on the fourth string. So that's the major seventh of F sharp minor, and Jerry likes to play chromatic neighbor tone, so that's what he's doing. Then going back to the 16th fret, the root, which just gives it an interesting sound. It's very different than... So we have... Then we're going to play that 15 on the 4th string again, 16, and then 14 on the 3rd string. Alright, and now we're on the D7 chord, and we're going to play the 14th fret on the 2nd string, and we're going to hammer on to the 15th fret. And this is an interesting note choice because we're playing the major 7th on a dominant 7th chord. But then we hammer into the root, play that again, and then this time we're going to pull off from 15 to 14 and slide down to the 13. So we're sliding into that uh, flat 7th of the D7 chord, then we're going to play 14th fret on the 3rd string, 14th fret on the 1st string, back to 13th fret on the 2nd. So we're holding this D7 shape, so we're playing out of chord shapes, and we have this. All right, and then still over the D7 chord, we have... All right, this is a nice bluesy lick, and we're starting by descending an A minor triad, 12th fret of the first string, 13th fret on the second, 14th fret on the third, so this A minor triad over D7 gives us the 9th, the flat 7th, and the 5th. And then we're going to pull off from 13 to 12. So we're actually playing an A minor 7 arpeggio. But we're adding a chromatic passing tune. And then we're going to play the 14th fret on the 4th string. That's our E, again our 9th. So we have... Then we're going to play 10, hammer on to 11 on the 3rd string, or flat 3rd to major 3rd. So Jerry does that a lot, especially in blues, common blues move. Then we're going to have 12, 11, 10 on the 4th string. So we're walking down from the root to the flat 7th. So all together we have... We're going to slide from the 12th fret up to the 14th fret on the 4th string. So as you can see, this is one of the things I wrote rushed on. So instead of just being straight 16ths, you hear it is. So then we go back to the 12th fret on the 4th string and 12th fret on the 2nd string. We're on our G chord and we're playing 5th, 3rd. Uh, so right out of this G right here. Then we slide up to the 13th fret on the 2nd string, play the 14th fret on the 3rd string, and then back to the 12th fret on the 2nd string. Alright, now we have our G minor chord. So if you saw my uh, rhythm lesson for this, You'll know that G minor is a borrowed chord from uh, D natural minor. So this is our modal interchange. We're going from a G, the 4 chord, to 4 minor. 
So since G minor comes from D natural minor, um, that's also the same notes of G Dorian. So Dorian is a scale you'd play over a minor seventh chord, and that's exactly what we're doing in this case. So what Jerry does is he starts on the flat five, so the D flat, and he bends up a half step to the D, which is the fifth of G minor. And this is one of those things you'll see that I marked in the transcription as straight because it's not swung. He's landing on the and of one. Then we let this down and on the um, on beat three, we play 15, 14, 15 on the third string. So that's our flat third, second, flat third. And then we have G the root, and that's the uh, 17th fret on the 4th string. And so he plays this, swung, and then he pulls back and straightens it out and plays the 14th fret of the 3rd string, that's our A, then we have 15th fret of the 4th string, that's our flat 7. And 17th fret, our root, and then 14th fret, that's our sixth. That's what gives it that Dorian sound. So we have. And then we're going to play some sextuplets, followed by a triplet. And we're going up the Dorian scale, but we're also going to use the flat five, the blues note, plus a chromatic passing tone. So we're starting on the 15th fret of the 4th string, that's our flat 7 or F, and we're playing. So we have. Alright, so this is something uh, Jerry would commonly do. On minor seven chords, you would use this pattern. So this Dorian pattern right here. So if we were to start on the 17th fret of the fifth string, we would play the 17th, then 14, 15, 17 on the fourth, 14, 15, 17 on the third, then 15, 17, 18 on the second and first strings. We have this Dorian shape. And this is something that I picked up both from Jerry and from uh, Dickie Betts. So if you're thinking um, Memory of Elizabeth Reed live at the Fillmore East album at the beginning when we just have that vamp. Uh, Dickie would improvise out of this shape because it gives you the flat five right here and right here. And just as a guitar player, you've got that shape that you can come up with some really cool patterns out of. And that's exactly what we're doing up here, but out of G Dorian. So again, we have that flat five here on the 16th fret of the fifth string and on the 14th fret of the second string. So let's look at our notes. We're playing 15 on the 4th, 17 on the 5th, then 14 on the 4th, 15 on the 5th, then 17 on the 5th. So we have... Then we have 14, 15, 17 on the 4th, 14, 15, 16, 17 on the 3rd, 14, 15, 14 on the 2nd, 15 or 17, 15, 16, 17 on the third, then 14, 15 on the second. So work on getting that under your fingers and then you can get it up to speed. And we have.
So then we have 14th fret on the third string, 15 to 14 on the second, 16 on the third, 14 on the second, 16 on the third. Then we have 15 on the first, 14 on the first, and then we have the 17th fret on the second string. And this is tricky because then he pulls it straight again when he plays that note. And we have, let's see. So 15 on the second, 16 on the third, 14 on the third. Then we have the 16th fret of the fourth string. Then we're going to hammer 14 to 16 on the fourth, 17 on the fourth. 16 on the 4th, 14 on the 4th, then we pull off to the 12th fret, play 16, 14, then 17th fret twice on the 5th string. Alright, so our last bar, bar 16 of the chord progression, our D, where we normally do our walk up. Alright, we're going to rest on the 1st beat, then we play 17 on the 6th string, 14 on the 5th, then 16, hammer on 17 on the 5th. And then that's where we would start our second chorus. So let me play everything slowly. we start our second chorus. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you next time.